Let's speak now to John Quinn, one of America's leading criminal lawyers and founding partner of the firm Quinn, Emmanuel Urquhart and Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Quinn, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, many people will be watching thinking, well, if Mr. Trump is found guilty of some of these charges, does that stop him from running for president? Does it? No, I don't think it does. Uh, it's kind of strange. You, I think you look at the statute books and come up empty handed looking for a statute that says if you're convicted uh, of a crime, you can't run for president. And of course, he's facing four prosecutions. He's facing the, this is just the first one now that's going to go to trial. He's facing a prosecution in New York, in Washington, D.C., in Georgia and in Florida. So, I mean, it's going to be very hard for him to run the table, I think, and to win all four of these. As you mentioned, uh, numerous uh, legal troubles here for Mr. Trump. He denies all these charges. He said they are politically motivated and many of them being orchestrated by Joe Biden and his political staff. Out of all these cases which are going on, is there one in particular that you think Mr. Trump should be worried about? Well, I think he has his best shots at winning this New York case, actually. I think it's an aggressive theory of uh, campaign finance uh, fraud, the theory that he paid off a woman in order to preserve his candidacy, and therefore it should have been reported as a, a campaign expense. I think that's kind of an aggressive theory. If I were handicapping it, I think he has a, a, a better than 50-50 chance of winning that case. The Florida case also, the classified documents in the home, there's some precedent. There's a case called the Clinton that's referred to uh, vernacularly as the Clinton sock drawer case, which provides some support for the idea that he could have a good faith belief that he could have these documents in, uh, in his home and that would defeat a criminal prosecution. I think the two toughest ones are in Washington, D.C., where the veneer, the jury is almost all likely to be all Democratic. It's 95 percent Democratic veneer there. The judge is a Democrat. I think that's a tough venue for him. And likewise, Georgia, where there's going to be 17 defendants. It's a democratic environment. Three have already pled guilty and are presumably cooperating with the prosecution. It's going to be a circus there. So, I mean, that to me, as to which is the most dangerous, it's a toss up for me between the D.C. case and the Georgia case. When Mr. Trump came out of the courtroom in New York earlier, one of the things he said to reporters was basically, this is a waste of my time. I'm supposed to be campaigning for the presidency, yet here I am in court in New York. Does Mr. Trump have to go to all of these hearings? Well, I, you know, as a criminal defendant, you want to show up and appear, and presumably the judge will order him to be there. Whether he will testify or not remains to be seen. Uh, but I'm not aware of any rule that he has to be there every single day. He, he seems to make the most of these opportunities when he shows up. I mean, the first thing that's going to happen in the New York case is jury selection. And it's going to be hard to pick a jury uh, in this case. I mean, both the prosecution and the defense will want try to find people who are unbiased and haven't already formed conclusions. In a case that's gotten publicity like this, that's going to be very, very hard to do. The jury selection process itself could take longer than the trial. And, you know, I would think that the president would want to show up and at least make an appearance and try to connect with the uh, jurors in the process of their being selected. OK, John Quinn, criminal lawyer, joining us from the U.S. Mr. Quinn, thank you very much.